bad spots in your yard, they keep on coming back year after year. We're going to talk about a wedding agent, which if you look at Matt, my wedding agent video, he watched my wedding agent video, used the H2O maximizer that I recommended, and look at the difference between his yard before and after. And K. Kevin J. also left a comment on my wedding agent video of how well it worked for him. He put it in his front yard and didn't put it in his back, and he saw a significant difference in the quality of his yard. In addition to wedding agents, we're going to touch on them. We're going to deal with these areas in your yard that keep on dying year after year. So I've got Joe, Michael, and Dave. I bet you a light bulb pops off when you see these. You can see here they have turf areas that didn't make it through the summer, but they're surrounded by hard surfaces, rock, asphalt, concrete. What happens is during the summer, you get these prolonged weeks of high temperatures, straight sun and it heats up those surfaces and it keeps the soil in those areas higher than what it would otherwise and therefore just like on a warm day with you you need more water to get through the day turf grass uses more water needs more water and it doesn't get it and it dies out another example is like david He's got a drip line in his tree. What happens is you have a tree, for example, and the grass dies out almost in a halo pattern on around the tree. What is happening there is, is the, the drip line of that tree is where the feeder roots are for that tree. I'm going to show you how to amend your soil and how we're going to get water down in there so the tree and your grass can coexist together. So we are dealing with the tough spots in your yard in this video, we're going to talk about seeding, amendments, airification, and how to get these to where they don't come back next year. And I'm going to dab into overseeding as well. So let's get started. Low spots in your yard. And this is what happened with my tall fescue ryegrass yard. What happened was uh, it used to be mowed by a riding lawn mower. Would, water, would mow when it was wet, particularly in the spring. And what happens is when you mow a yard when it's wet, and ultimately you're going to have to right? You are taking that soil and you are swishing it every single time. And what happens is you're breaking down that soil structure. You're breaking down the peds of that soil. What they do is that soil structure, that allows the water to infiltrate in those little macro and micro pores that are in that soil surface. Also, if you have grass on top, it actually helps the infiltration rate because it actually works its way down through the roots. So what are we talking about on soil structure? I'm going through this real quick so you guys understand it. But basically what it is, if you take, this is a pretty heavy clay, but if you take it off and you see here, that's what I'm talking about on soil structure. See, there's a structure there that actually there's little breaks together and it will continue to break apart. It's kind of like, the best way I can describe it is, is when you take clay and you, wa and you put water to it, uh, you either compact it for a foundation on a house or you make a clay pot, put water into it, compact a little bit and now it will not take up any water and it will compact and won't allow any roots to infiltrate. So I'm going to show you how to break that up and restore those soil, the peds, the structure of that soil. Okay, where I'm getting these photographs is on the Facebook page. If you guys need any advice or need a shout out, talk a little smack, show us what is working for you. I really like comments on these videos twofold. One, what's working for you and two, what I call a gem, meaning a comment that I have to really dig into, look up, and try to figure out an answer for you. Actually getting down to amending the soil. What we're going to be doing, many of you may say, hey, let's use organic matter. Not a bad move, but I've got one better one. That's why I want to make this video to kind of expose you guys to this. There is a ceramic aggregate. Um, I use Profile. There's two of them I found on Amazon. One of them is Turfus, and the other is Fielder's Choice. They're all essentially the same particle what it is, <clears throat> why you would not want to use organic material. You can blend some organic material into this, but at the end of the day, what we're wanting to do, we're wanting water infiltration into that soil. We're wanting to get down in there. And I'll show you overlap as I'm doing this, Dr. Gardner's video, so you really understand what you're doing and how much you're going to do for your soil with this. The turfus aggregate, okay, or the field of choice, or the profile. If you guys can find profile in that finer part of the size, go for it. You're going to pay a little bit more for it because it's more refined product. These two have a reasonable price with them. Has many benefits over organic material. It's particle size is going to allow that water to infiltrate in that soil much better. Two, one of the benefits of using 
organic material is its nutrient holding capacity, what are often called cation exchange capacity, measured in milliequivalents per 100 grams. So you guys don't give a hoop about that, but to give you an idea. Typical soil test. If you guys want to take a soil test, you can check out that video right here. If you want a good place to get your soil test done, I will leave a QR code and all these links I will leave in the description first comment. You can QR code this, hold your phone up to the TV screen. A lot of you guys watching TV screens will take you to a website where you can get a soil test done in your state that's unbiased, usually from a grand, land grant university like North Carolina State University in my state right now is West Virginia. Um, several other in your state, and it's actually the soil test results are based on the soils that are in your state, by the way. So if you use one of these national ones, they probably have something, but typically they have a fertilizer <laughs> brand that they're trying to sell you to. So I like going to this QR code for a soil test. Anyway, so the, the cation exchange capacity of these ceramic aggregates is 33 milliequivalents per 100 grams, which is actually pretty high. If you guys look at oftentimes your soil test, you guys want to have already had it done. Nine is usually pretty good. Ten is usually great for soils. Most, some I've seen as low as five to four. So 33 milliequivalents per 100 grams is actually pretty doggone high. So you actually have water holding capacity, air holding capacity, nutrient holding capacity within this. And we're going to blend that in with sand. So we have the, <laughs> the infiltration and the water holding capacity of sand and the ceramic aggregate all together going into these holes. So let's get to it. I'll show you exactly what we doing and how to get these spots addressed where they're not going to be a problem for you in the future. Now I'm going to blend the ceramic aggregate with the sand and about minimum a handful for every 10 pounds that you do, maximum probably three for every 10 pounds. I wouldn't go over that. I know some of you guys may ask, well, how about I put just all that aggregate in there? You don't want to do that. You want some level of finer material in there for the roots to be supported within that specific area and in your top dressing. Now I'm going to come in and dethatch. I really like this little rake. I've got it on my Amazon storefront. It does a very good job. It's a little pricey, but it really is strong and it takes the thatch out very well. So I'm kind of preparing this seed bed, but I want to do this first because I'm going to be going in with this pitchfork. And what I'm doing is I'm restoring the structure of the soil has been broken down oftentimes because it's saturated or like in some areas of this yard, the mower has gone over it and compacted this soil. I am opening this soil up so that infiltration gets back into the soil. Now I'm putting holes in here with the soil probe. I've got one of those on my Amazon storefront. This one I've had for 20 years, but what I'm creating in this area to the upper right is area where the water can infiltrate. Now, here's what we're doing. And I'm going to show you this first. Watch how the water goes in there. Now, I'm creating these areas for when you get a big storm in the summer and wet water works down in that soil profile. So that way it can fill that reservoir up during the summer. And it really helps that infiltration. And that's where that wetting agent with this technique and the wetting agent it'll really get that soil going. Now, if you notice there on the right, I go into this extensively, my long leveling and top dressing video. You notice that area where the soil, the finer part of material is on top. Look at the water not going into that spot. Here's an area of finer textured soil over a coarser textured soil. Do you see how that has to get saturated first and you get this layering effect? You don't want that. So I go over that in the long leveling and top dressing video. Now, here I'm filling in these airification holes. And there again, I want this all the way to the top. So that way that water works into that coarser material and gets into that soil, deep into that soil in a way. And I'm adding that ceramic aggregate, adding to the CEC of this area, the nutrient holding capacity and the infiltration rate into that soil. I want to tell you about this video sponsor, Wild Badger and their new four in one tool. It is a weed eater. It is a hedge trimmer, a powerful hedge trimmer. I've been trying to tame this bush for quite some time and this thing went right through it. It's a very easily adjustable head, cuts with precision. Here's the 10 inch chainsaw bar going through this 10 inch limb. I like the reach and being able to be that far away from where I'm cutting, which is a safer way to go. Here I am cutting up that limb for the backyard fire pit. How hard is it to switch from saw to weed eater to hedge trimmer? Let's take a look. Ah! <sighs> 
Anything that's too big for the weed eater or too small for the chainsaw, you can use the brush cutter and it cuts right through these smaller saplings very nicely and cleans this up very well. Not only is this a great value, it also saves a lot of space in your garage having all these in one tool. I like that tool a lot. Now, when you have any left, just put it over top of where you filled these holes. That'll also work down into those peds and help that infiltration as well. Then I'm going to rake it in. And I do this on golf course greens, and I did this in my airification video. You guys can check that out if you air find the entire yard. This will be a great time to do all this. So after I've drug everything in, this is really important. You have got to hose this stuff in the moment you put it on because what's going to happen is it actually will pull water from the soil because of the capillary action of that material you just put in will actually draw it out of the soil. So you've got to activate it by watering it thoroughly and really, really water it. But that is really going to get that water down into that soil profile and really going to help this bad area recover. Okay, I really wanted to go over that real quick. It's actually fairly simple, uh, but I wanted to kind of give you guys a background so you can diagnose things, see how other guys are having problems with these areas, why they're a problem, and you can identify them in your yard and as you go. There again, check out that wedding agent video. You guys can do that when you're overseeding. If you guys want overseeding, here is my overseeding video from 2025. It refers to the one from 2024. I go over a great deal in that with... Uh, how to prepare your yard seating and particularly go a little bit more in depth into poanya control, poa trivialis control in when you're overseeding and how to prevent that being a problem in the future. Between that video and this video and using very good seed varieties, we'll talk about that for just a second, but if you use those two videos, you're really going in the next year dealing with these bad spots, using a wetting agent, and overseeding with a quality seed. Now, uh, go over how where to get quality seed. Uh, I always go to Twin City Seed. Let me talk about seed for just a second. <clears throat> Twin City Seed, I also have it on my Amazon storefront. Here's my seed list on Amazon storefront. If you guys go to a box store and you buy seed, you are going to be introducing weeds to your yard, and it's a not a very quality grass at all. It is a very poor quality. Twin City Seed only sells certified seed. What do I mean by certified seed? It has actually been certified to be a pure variety of grass, that specific variety, that specific species within that bag. And that is where you're going to have problems if you go out with these seed that you're getting at Walmart, getting at Lowe's, what have you. Expanding a little bit more on this for those of you who may have not been to the channel. I went to the North Carolina State University's Lake Wheeler Turfgrass Research Day just a few weeks ago. You can see me here. This is what I'm talking about, superior varieties. These land-grant universities that I was telling you that give you the unbiased soil test also evaluate in the National Turfgrass Evaluation Program the different varieties. Okay, you have species. You have tall fescue, ryegrass, bluegrass, uh, Bermuda, et cetera, so on and so forth. Then you have varieties of grass. Okay, those are all different varieties of tall fescue that I just showed you there. And they grow them side by side and compare them and grade them on quality, color, disease resistance, etc. The only things that go on my Amazon storefront, quite honestly, are sold by Twin City Seed, are the ones that perform very high on the North, that, that NTEP trial, the National Progress Evaluation Program. You get from a box store or anything else, they're going to be probably either not on that list, which sometimes that does not necessarily mean a bad thing. There are good varieties that are not included in the NTEP, but I don't know for sure. I can't compare them. So that's why I only go with the NTEP trials. But most of them aren't. And you're going to be right back where you are if you don't go with a good variety, particularly the good variety of grass. So sometimes you'll pay a little bit more, sometimes a little bit cheaper. Because what you'll get at the box store, I'm telling you, they'll put fillers in there. Uh, they'll put like mulch, a hydro mulch in there. It's not necessarily that they're bad products. It's just they're not bad products. I just don't like the way they're packaged. And they put a lot of fluff in there, and you're paying a lot of money for a lot of stuff that you don't need. I go over in that overseeding video of how to get that seed on that soil, get good soil seed contact, how to fertilize, 
this year's 2025 uh, overseeding video. I go over it and tell you how to do great Poe and you control uh, Poe Trivialis. A lot of these weeds that are very, very difficult. Show you how to control all those. You have herbicides. You can apply it seeding. And I have an Amazon storefront. I've said this in my other videos. I don't give a damn where you buy anything. I don't care. You can get it on the storefront. The storefront primarily is there. I'll tell you why the storefront is there. I had a guy had a comment. I can't remember if it was on the channel or on the Facebook page. He had put glyphosate out as a rec as a as a to re to to do a renovation on the yard. Unfortunately, he got the glyphosate from a local store, and it had a pre-emergent herbicide in it. So, since it had the pre-emergent herbicide, now he's not able to seed his yard until spring. So, I put that Amazon storefront there, so you guys I show them in the videos, so you guys know you're getting the right product because it's a very easy mistake to make, particularly with all the marketing nonsense that goes on with these products. And I actually advocate for some lowest fertilizers too. My that's <laughs> stay green max. You see me in the, you know, there's good stuff at Lowe's, but not seed. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I'm here to help. I've been doing this for 35 years. I am an agronomist. I'm a North Carolina State University graduate. Now I, this is a creative outlet for me and just something fun. I'm right now in retirement stage and I enjoy doing this. I enjoy helping out and getting to talk to you guys and helping you and sometimes even learn a thing or two for you. There again, leave me a gem in the comments. So anyway, I appreciate you watching. And remember, it's not that complicated.